I got to thinking, last time you and I sat on chairs like this, not the Red Sox pregame show we do up there, it was the, uh, the, the Cinco Ocho show at Winter Weekend. That was fun. And I couldn't help but think, yeah, they put Papelbon first so he wouldn't have as much crown as he did that night. I think it makes sense. We're drinking vodka tonight. He noticed that. We are. Uh, what does this mean to you tonight? What does it mean well, to be in the Red Sox Hall of Fame? So to me, um, the biggest thing is, is like who I'm, who I'm going in with. So Trot and Dustin were two guys to me that uh, Trot when I came up and Dustin who I came up through the minor leagues with were two guys that, um, I don't know, we can ask Pookie, but I don't think they ever came in with a clean, clean uniform. So for me to be inducted with those two type of players uh, means the world to me. And um, see, so I viewed myself as an everyday player. You know, I know Theo's not here tonight, but he wanted me to be a starter. And he was dead wrong, y'all. <laughs> dead wrong. And so um, I viewed myself as an everyday player. I wanted to affect the game you know, 75 to 80 times a season. I didn't want to go out there and pitch, you know, one, once every fifth day. And to me, being able to go into the Hall of Fame with two guys who I think nobody played better right field than Trot, nobody played a better second baseman than Dustin. So, um, yeah, to me, that's, that's the most special thing. July 31st, 2005, the trade deadline. Everybody thought Manny Ramirez was gone. Game was like 1.30 on a Sunday afternoon. Nobody sees Manny till he comes out at 4.02. Trade deadline was at 4. So Manny's still with the Red Sox. Nobody knew. Manny comes up, pinch hits, walk off hit. You, they, they get the win. Yeah, I snuck in here. I snuck in here and, um, you know, thank God Manny was being Manny and I could just come in and, um, you know, not too much pressure was on me. All the pressure was on is Manny getting traded or not. So. To me, I just came in and wanted to be a part of the team. And, um, you know, it, it even goes back to when I was first called up with the Red Sox. You know, um, I got called up in a spring training game. Trot, you probably remember this. This son of a bitch. He, uh, he gets drilled, and uh, I was like, oh, God, I got to drill somebody. Then Kevin Millar gets drilled. I'm like, oh, God, I really got to drill somebody. And then uh, I think Palmero came up. And I was like, I can't drill him because he's a Mississippi State guy like me. And then uh, Sosa came up, and I was like, well, they got a Dominican pitcher, and he's a Dominican, so I'm going to drill him because he's been drilling everybody. And to be able to continue what the 04 team did, in my opinion, um, I came into a group of guys, and, you know, Tim Wakefield was the heavy on the team, and um, – you know, God bless him, man. I, um, you know, he bought me my first suit, and um, there was just so many, so many things that I learned, and I, I was able to become a big leaguer through the 04 team that set the culture. I mean, these guys, they set the culture, and I just followed in suit, and I, I came in here and, and expecting a championship every year. When you're coming out to shipping up to Boston, and the whole place is standing up doing a river dance, like you thrived in that atmosphere, didn't you? Yeah, I did because um, I, I, I learned to pitch that way. I learned to pitch as a closer, and um, you know, uh, Sarah McKenna's here today. She's here somewhere. I think she's got a headset on, looking like a truck driver. Running the whole show. Um, but she was the one that, there she is. She was the one that came up with shipping up to Boston so we can all give her credit for that. And then the drop kicks came in. The next thing you know, I'm partying with the drop kicks and we're winning it all. So, Ken Casey made a lot of money. Yeah, that's, that, 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 was, that was how it all worked went out for everybody. Uh, that, uh, that championship clincher, wait, right? When the regular season, when you guys clinched at the end of the regular season, if I recall, that was the night you had to wait. We had to wait to see what happened in Baltimore. You were waiting, right? Waiting, waiting. And then you found out you had clinched. And that's when you first came out yeah, and did the go. dance in the spandex and the Bud Light case on your head. And my five-year-old kid said, I want to go to Halloween with a Bud Light box on my head. So thank you for that.
I have kids now. I have, I have kids now. You know this. Yeah. Sorry, it was a Diet Coke box. So, um, Bad memory. Yeah, I will say this, that that had to do with, um, number one, I blame Alex Cora, because he came up with Cinco Ocho. And he was a real, real thorn in my ass, you know, for a long time. You can even ask my mom and dad. <laughs> Gave them hell, too. Um, but it also created... Um, the persona of going out there and fighting for my team. You know, when I crossed the white lines, there was nothing else that mattered except for competing. And um, for me to be able to play with Dustin and Trot and be able to be inducted with them um, is so special because those guys compete. There was, there was not a playoff, and I took that to the mound. And so... You know, for me, being able to, to play in front of these fans and be able to do that in that aspect, I just I, I felt like another everyday player. I really did. And, and so to me, being able to do that in front of these fans who I know love and respected that was everything. Nobody dreams of, of growing up and starting on trade deadline day. Everybody dreams of growing up and getting the final out of a World Series. What is that like? Yeah, so Schillen, after the game was over, he came up to me and he said, Pat, man, you, you accomplished one of my lifelong dreams. You struck out somebody to win the World Series. And, you know, I never really thought about that. And, and even, even the kid that I struck out, I had been playing against since like 18 years old. He went to Ole Miss. I went to Mississippi State. So I faced him many a times. And um, the best part about it was that I knew that, okay, this culture – this way is still in existence. And I was able to continue that. Come, a, a guy that was born and raised in the South, I'll be honest with you, when I got drafted by the Red Sox, I didn't know a damn thing about the Red Sox. I didn't. I, um, this guy named Joe Mason drafted me, and I was like, hey, Joe, uh, Red Sox haven't done, they, I don't, have, have they won lately? I was like, no, they hadn't won lately. I was like, he's like, yeah, they want to draft you. And I was like, well, if they want to draft me, tell Theo or the, I didn't know who he was. I said, tell the general manager they need to come, you know, watch me. Sure enough, Theo came to SEC tournament, saw me and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm so thankful and, and, and try, this is no, man. I'm, I'm thankful for y'all, man, and, and what y'all did, what y'all started here, man. This is, this is the reason why we're here.